Hello everyone! In this video, you will have a quick refresh on the MSQ from 6.1 through 6.4. So when you step into 6.5, you know exactly what was happening last time. So our story started with the end of an era. The science have disbanded, at least to the world, and have become a secret organization once more. With Tatra using our headquarters as a base of operation for a new clothing store. And this is where our new adventure starts. We remember the words of Emmett Sells urging us to go explore the bounties under sea ruins. So we meet with Tatru to get some advice on where we should start, as he is our resident expert information gatherer. Z naturally tells us to go to whatever, so we end up at the Mirai's Mayen in Rasatan, where we meet Professor Jalin. After we buy him a drink, he tells us the legend of Al Sadal III, where apparently a famous satrap forged an alliance with a dragon and at one point return from an adventure to another world with wondrous riches. And this treasure is apparently meant to be under sea in a secret place only accessible from one of the islands of the bounty. After this we do manage to obtain a map from a shady merchant which is supposed to indicate where this treasure is. We also come across the Stinian buying the same map and we end up calling Grahatia to join us on adventure because, well, I think we're all traumatized after the end of Endwalker. And we as well call for Istola, as she is searching for ways to travel across the realms, and as we are talking about a satrap who somehow managed to travel to another world, this might interest her. So as a group we travel beneath the bounty into the dungeon of Al Sadal's legacy, where we find not just treasure, but a planar fissure leading to the 13th, or the void as it's more commonly known as. Now it turns out Vitra knew about the fissure, in fact, he had this whole elaborate security system crafted to keep the people away from it. The security system we just trashed on our way in here. It turns out that when the Elegant Empire tried to invade Miracidia, they tore open the void to do so. During this time, Vitra's elder sister Astaya charged into the void drift and was never seen again. But now she's trapped on the other side, and there is no way to get her back or even know if she's still alive. We decide this is not something we can accept, so along with our friends, we start researching a way to extend the fissure so we can travel to the 13th and hopefully find Astaya. Meanwhile, on the 13th, we get our first glimpse of a dark knight, which we later learn is Golbez. He is sitting on a throne, speaking to the four Arshfiends, each one connected to a single element, and the group is speaking about their plan to start a war and redeem their star. And that is where patch 6.2 starts. We finally have found a way to get into the void, and Vitra decides to join us in a new body. This one is more fit for fighting, and also more reasonable size to actually get through the portal, as the portal cannot accommodate a full-grown dragon. Together we head into the void, entering the dungeon the Fell Court of Troia. Travelling through the dungeon, we end up chasing away this area's master, and we face the first Arshfiend, Skarmillion. As we defeat him, we attempt to communicate with the Void Sand of the castle until we come across no other than the Void Sand once bound to Sinos. This person will later get the name Zero, so I will use that from now on. Zero explains how the life in the Void works. Apparently if you die there, you don't get combined again with the life stream, so there is no actual permanent death in the Void. So life here is basically an endless existence of suffering, hunger, and either attempting to eat other void beings to become more powerful, or hide so you don't get eaten. And even when a void being is eaten, they kind of just fuse with the one who ate them, and when they eventually are killed and kind of shatter apart, you will apparently end up becoming yourself again at some point. It is an endless cycle, and the people here are understandably not very happy. Sira tells us that this world was once normal, but it fell to darkness, and Zero is actually unique as she is not a void sand, but an half one, as she was still in her mother's womb when the change happened. But as we learned, void sand don't die, so Skarmillion is not dead and he actually comes and attacks us again. This time, Zero does help us, and it turns out she has the ability to change void beings into crystals, which is as close to death as they can find in this realm. As we touch the crystal, we see a vision of Golbez with the four Arshfiend all in the presence of what seems to be a dragon, and we believe this is Astaya. 
wanting more answers, it's decided that we can't really stay in Troia, so we go with Zero to her own area of the 13th, where she has several Void beings under her protection. We also learn that in the Void, everything is done in sort of trades. Nobody gives anything for free, be it information or assistance, so for Zero to help us, we also have to give Zero either. And as we're learning about the Void, a new domain just kind of shows up beside Zero's domain. This belongs to Barbaricia, the Archfiend of Wind. We end up having to fight her, and while we do defeat her with Zero's help, she is so exhausted that she collapses after the fight. It turns out she is simply out of ether. So what we decide to do is actually take her to the source, which is abundant with ether, and therefore she should hopefully recover quicker. So we take her to Ratsatan. She does recover and wake up, and we start introducing her to our world, taking her on a tour of the city and feeding her some apples. But she finds quite interesting that we have to eat to get our ether. And with this we get to patch 6.3. Zero has recovered, so we are planning to go back to the void. But just as we're talking about it, Wittra kind of comes just running through the castle in his dragon form, going outside and roaring to the sky. He claims he can sense his sister somewhere in the north. So we change our plans and head to Karlmald instead. There we meet with the Levier twins and Julius, and we learn that there is some increased void sighting in the area. So we assist with some patrols, trying to keep the people safe, and while we're there, Zero tries out different kind of food, and keeps on talking to the people of the source, making her seem to change her mind that everything has to be transactional, as he does end up actually helping people by her own choice. But with the amount of voids that we are finding in the region, it is clear there is a void gate somewhere. So we end up traveling up to the mountain to the village of Lapis Manales, which was the homes of reapers in the past. This village is long abandoned, but as we travel through it and below it, we do find a void gate below ground, and Cagnasos, the Archfiend of Water. He is here, fully physically, so we don't have to turn him into a crystal, but instead we just kill him. And after we kill him, we close the gate. As Astai is not here, so we head back to Ratatan where we see a pillar of light coming up from where our void portal is. As we go explore it, we learn that a fiend burst out of the flames, heading up to Katka, the big rock formation over the sea. We managed to make our way up there, and we find there the final Arshvind, which is Rubicante, the Arshvind of Fire. We face him in the instance Mount Ordeal, and take him down. And through this fight, we do learn that Golpis intends to invade the source, so the people of the Void can be granted true death, and return to the livestream. And Rubicante tells us that if we want to find Astaya and Golpes, we're gonna have to go to the moon of the 13th. And that is where that patch ended, as we have to find a new way into the void and, well, to the moon of the 13th, so we can finally save Astaya. And here, patch 6.4 started. We spent some time with Zero, who is exploring the variety of spices of our world. Before Istola tells us, she has found a way to reach the 13th moon. To do this, we must head up to Merla Mentorian and there open the gate to the 13th moon in the crate, as that gate will actually be big enough for Vitra to pass through Anastasia to return through as well. Now, there are two things we need for this to work. We require a lot of ether and permission from the Ilspart continent to use the Tower of Babel to get everybody up to the moon. Our first stop is, of course, to obtain ether. We go to Sherlayan, where we obtain some specialized tanks, and go through the dungeon known as the Ether Font to obtain said ether. Using our contacts there as well, we get somebody to actually move the ether for us to the right place. So our next stop is Garlemald. Now the people of Garlemald aren't exactly thrilled about us using the tower, as it does hold a lot of really bad memories for them. So as we worked on getting our acceptance, Zero bonded with Julius, and we saw a memory of her from before the 13th got changed. During this memory, she met a mage in a night, which one of them is clearly Golbes and his friend, and she refused to team up with them, as at the time she simply did not hold the trust in other people. But Zero seems to be learning the importance of trust and friendship here, 
To convince the people of Garlema to give us access to the tower, Vitra actually creates a trade agreement between Garlemald and Rasatan, which allows the people of Garlemald to start taking more control over their lives again and gives us access to the tower. We meet with the Lopris for a bit, introduce them to Ciro, which is kind of funny, and then we make our portal to get to the moon of the 13th. There we find out that Golbus has made his base in the crater. We meet with him and demand he release Astaya from her prison, which he does, and that leaves her at mercy to the ambient darkness of the 13th, causing her to transform into a void sand, which Golbus names Shadow Dragon. In our effort to save Astaya, we fight Golbus in the instant Voidcast days. And while we do beat Golpus, we learn the true horror of his plan. He always planned to infuse Astaya with zodiac residual ether, and with the birth of Voidsend, with a single and obsessive desire to breach the barrier between the worlds, an entity named after an ancient hero of the 13th, Ceromus. As Ceromus is forming, we quickly return back to the source to regroup and plan how to deal with this new threat. Vitra did get injured during the fight, so at the moment we do not have the power to face this new threat. But we do have a plan to obtain the light from the first and use it to come to the darkness of the 13th. And that is what we will be doing in patch 6.5. If you found this video to be handy, make sure to like it, subscribe if you like Final Fantasy XIV lore, and of course, share this with your friends. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I hope you will have a lovely 6.5.